Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Stanley F248 Swing Clear Hinge is what this is. This is a swing clear hinge, and this is what it looks like uh, in the satin chrome or US 26D finish. Okay, this first part of the video is going to serve as visual and dimensional evidence of the item. If what you want first is to see what it looks like, well, here it is. That's what it looks like. This is what you'll see when you're standing on the pull side of the door when the door is in the closed position, either like this or like this, depending on the hand of the door. Okay. Uh, this is what that same door would look like when the door was open towards you, or at least you wouldn't see that. You're going to see the door here, but you'll see this area in here. And then when the door is open to 180 degrees, it'll look more like that. So a rather unusual hinge. Let's take some dimensional properties. This is a four inch hinge. Hinges have two dimensions, a height and a width. Um, when they're a full mortise type or you know some type that, that requires a width dimension as well. When it comes to swing clear, um, and a swing clear hinge is one type of hinge that would not require really a width, um, although it does require some other things that we know. Uh, hinges that require a height and a width would be a full mortise hinge, whether it be just, you know, your regular 4x4, four 4.5, four, four and a half, four and a half, or a wide throw hinge, something like 5x8, you know, so you need to have both dimensions, but many hinges don't really call it out because, okay, that's the width, does that data, is that important to you at all? Probably not. So it is 4 inch tall, okay. This is a standard weight hinge, which means that it is 130 thousandths of an inch thick. Let's put our caliper on this hinge leaf and double check that. 0.128, so yeah, standard weight. You've got three different thicknesses of hinges. Residential weight, about 96 thousandths. Standard weight, for a four inch hinge, about 130 thousandths. Heavy weight, which would be 180 thousandths. You won't find a heavy weight really in a four inch uh, tall hinge, you'd see that really at a, not that it couldn't be made, I imagine that Stanley can, but you'd really see that when you're dealing with commercial doors. A four inch hinge would not be the size for a commercial door. Now, the point is, what do you use this for? Why in the world are you looking at this um, hinge in the first place? Where do people use these? Let's talk about that right now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now, why might you be looking at a swing clear hinge? Well, the fundamental principle of a swing clear hinge is that when the door is taken from the closed position to the open position, because the vertical axis of pivot has been relocated, it serves to take the door out of the opening. When it moves out, it actually moves out and clears the clear opening. In your mind's eye, imagine a door. You're standing on the push side. When you take that door and open it to 90 degrees, forget the door now. Now, just measure between the stops. So, just a simple example. Um, a three foot, let's, let's, let's say a two foot eight, a 32 inch residential door. The door itself is 32 inch. The inside of the jam is gonna be closer to about 32 and three eighths something in that range, 32 and, an eight, uh, 32 and a quarter, let's say it's 32 and a quarter. Let's say that you have half inch stops that are applied there. So 32 and a quarter minus half inch minus half inch, 31 and a quarter is now your clear opening. But when you have a standard hinge where that door goes to 90 degree, part of the outside heel edge of that door is encroaching into that 31 and a quarter space. If you have need to get wheelchair traffic through that door, and frankly, people that purchase these hinges these three and a half F248s, maybe a four inch F248, are literally in residential applications where <clears throat> someone who has come home now um, requires the assistance of a wheelchair, squeezing every inch, every quarter inch, every half inch out of an opening to allow people to continue living life as no close to normal as possible is the goal and the purpose of swing clear hinges. That's likely the application for this hinge. In the commercial world, you have a requirement, uh, a federally mandated requirement to maintain a minimum clear opening size. When you're dealing with doors, that has to be a, a clear opening size of 32 inch. If you have a three foot door hung on standard hinges and you work the math, 
your 32 inch minimum clear opening is observed. But if you have a two foot 10 door, now you have a problem. That same, that same logic will not hold. So when you determine your clear opening size and it comes down, down to the door being in the way when it's at 90 degrees or any degree really, and that moving the vertical axis of pivoting over will allow the door to move out of the opening, that solves your problem. That's why you're likely looking at this hinge. That vertical axis of pivot relocation, if this was a standard hinge, your, your hinge barrel would be right about here. But when we move it so far over, it's really going to allow that door to get out of the opening completely. If this vertical axis of pivoting was over here, that door would be, would be encroaching into the clear space but not when you have a swing clear hinge. It just moves it. Other hinges have the capability of doing this as well. Another hinge, I should say, and that's called a Harman hinge or a pocket pivot uh, or a pocket door hinge. The term pocket is used in different ways, very different ways, in fact. A lot of people will think of a pocket door as a door that slides into a cavity in a wall. Sure, let's call it a pocket door. But a pocket hinge is a very different animal uh, where it will uh, where it acts like a swing clear hinge in the sense that its vertical axis of pivoting has been relocated such that when the door opens it is completely out of the uh, opening space altogether um, and that's called a Harmon H-A-R-M-O-N or a pocket hinge or a pocket pivot you will find those it's interesting review to do if you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now let's do a tour of what's in the box. You're going to get the hinge. Um, this is going to be available in 3.5, 4 inch, 4.5 inch. I'm quite sure they can do 5 inch as well. They can do this in standard weight. They can do it in heavy weight. They can do it in 5 knuckle plain bearing, 5 knuckle ball bearing, 3 knuckle concealed bearing. You know, Stanley is extremely capable. Um, in fact, I would say more capable than other manufacturers, um, all other manufacturers when it comes to ordering off the menu, so to speak. They are, they're, they're pretty astounding. Uh, I've asked them to do things that everyone else has said no. Um, and Stanley is not my first hinge company that I would think to work with. I work with others more primarily. However, Stanley's capability and their, their fit and finish, in fact, you know, the quality of the fit and finish is very good. Uh, what I mean by that is the hinge looks presentable. It's just a hinge. A lot of people don't really think of it, but, you know, you're paying money for this hardware. <clears throat> you want it to look nice, and, and Stanley always does a very good job with that. The telltale sign is always, what does that leaf look like? Is it very flat all the way across? Is there milling run out at the very end? In the crotch of the hinge barrel, have they finished it very well? You can see here and here that there's a difference in how the light is reflected. And that's because it's not brushed, because they can't get the tool in there. But they do a good job, meaning they, they exert effort to make it look finished. Not every manufacturer is so good at doing that, um, I can tell you. This has a button tip on it. Looks like the button on your shirt or the button on your coat. It has a hole down here, <clears throat> which means you can drive that pin out. In fact, the Stanley hinge includes such tool and there's and I'll show you where the there's a link that shows you how to drive that out you basically put that in there and then you just tap on that now why would you reverse the hinge pin well I would think that you want the solid tip at the top and not the tip with the hole most people won't recognize that a door person would but right now this is either a right hand or it's a left hand reverse well if you had a left hand door if you're on the pull side or a right hand reverse yeah, you're probably going to want to reverse that tip around. Okay. Plus, you might want to pull the pin out uh, and leave and leave this cap here to just hang the door. That's how I do it. I attach the leaf to the door and to the frame, and then I simply bring the door and frame together, tap the hinge pins down, and I'm in good shape. I don't try to take the entire hinge with the entire uh, the, the hinge attached to the entire door and then install all of that. I, I like to separate the two. It's a little easier to get the door up on the hinge barrels and then lock them together with their hinge pins. Uh, you're going to also get screws. This has all wood screws and all machine screws. Absolutely, as a rule, specify the fastener type that you want at the time of order. This is a four inch hinge. Why are there machine screws in here? Well, maybe it's being hung on a steel frame. That's possible. 
But if I were to guess what this is going to be installed on, I would certainly say a wood door and a wood frame. And I think the factory would draw the same logical conclusion and not send machine screws. I don't know what the published standard is for Stanley because I don't believe there is one. Define what you expect, what you require when you get the hinges so that when you go to install them, you're ready, you've got all your tools, you've been planning this for two weeks, you get your hinge, take it out of the box and you realize there's not enough wood screws, okay, or whatever the case might be. Tell us, all machine screws, all wood screws, half wood, half machine, whatever the case is. All wood screws, all machine screws, you can say that as well, uh, and the factory will oblige that. And if it's a standard fastener, there wouldn't be additional uh, charges that there could be and would be with a security fastener. Um, okay, now let's switch to the screen view and let's go over all of our supporting documentation for this swing clear hinge. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the hinge that we are looking at, and let's start this off by looking at the images that we have. Here's the box. There's our hinge when it comes out of the box. Different perspectives now on the hinge. This would be looking at the right side view of a left hand door. Rotated now 90 degrees. This is this is what you would see. You would never see this elevation. This is when the this is these this is the side that faces the jam or the casing. You'd never see that either. That is what's going to be installed to the uh, frame rabbit itself. Uh, that would be a elevation perspective for that same left hand door. That's what you will see when the door is in the closed position. Cross section, so to speak. Let's look at the next set of images. That's the door open to 90 degree. This is your frame. Okay. This is your door here. There's 180 degree. Just an image showing what the countersinks look like for the door and frame rabbit. And then your screw package. And then your instructions along with your tool. And that's where that document is. Pretty simple and straightforward. <clears throat> <clears throat> I would not recommend using the end of your wooden hammer for doing that work. I would have a mallet. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the extended description. Designed to swing doors completely clear of the opening when the door is at 90 degree. This is for square edge doors. Now, this is one of the things in, in the world of swing clear hinges... Uh, raised barrel hinges and the different variants of how raised barrel are applied is important to understand for square edge doors. Now let's just dive into that. Um, we have okay, we've got our frame. Uh, this is going to be shown to have casing on it. We've got our swing clear hinge okay then we have our then we have our door now what we're trying to drive at is the relationship of these two leaves are parallel. If you have a door that has a bevel on it, it's going to be a bit tough to get the two leaves to come together to accommodate a beveled edge. In fact, it's mandatory that you order swing clear hinges for the appropriate edge condition, whether it be three degree, which is the common bevel, or square edge. This may leave us in a position where the F248 is not the appropriate hinge for the application. Um, and if we can draw our attention to the concern a little bit better, it's really evidenced here. These two leaves are parallel with each other. If your door was beveled, this end would have to go in a little bit. Sorry, this end would have to go in a little bit. And it just doesn't have the bend on the leaf here to accommodate that. Now, will it work? 
you can certainly attach it, but you're probably going to find that to get the door fully closed, this part of the leaf and this part of the leaf are going to make contact, and that is probably going to make it hinge bound. So because these leaves, when the door is in the closed position, are bent in such a way to accommodate a square edge door only, um, you'll need you'll need to incorporate the proper edge treatment on your hinges when you order them. Okay, four inch standard weight. That means well, I've got 123 thousandths here. That's we'll see if the catalog says that. If it it ought to say 130 thousandths. I might be incorrect. We'll take a look. I think a three and a half inch is 123 thousandths. Uh, plain bearing, meaning there are no bearing packets in this hinge at all. A FBB248 would be a ball bearing hinge and would be absolutely a better option in all circumstances. Uh, a ball bearing hinge is a far less friction type of uh, installation and while you may not have the volume on your door to justify a ball bearing hinge, I assure you that after 20 years uh, you will definitely see the wear pattern on a plain bearing hinge um, even if it's a very low volume application. I would go with a ball bearing in all instances unless the door was hardly if ever used but if that was the case you probably wouldn't need a swing clear hinge. Standard weight steel base. It is a steel base hinge. It's made of steel and that's buried in the part number as well. US 26D is the US code for satin chrome. It's a satin chrome plating. We could call this 652 which would be the BHMA code for satin chrome. The difference between US 26D and 652 is the fact that 652 means steel base. Satin chrome you might have heard of as 626. Well, that's the BHMA code for satin chrome as well, except that tells us the base material is uh, brass. So we could call it 2060. It'd be more accurate to call this 652. St Stanley has been in business for, um, my guess would be 80 years or 100 years before the BHMA code came into existence, 140 years maybe. Uh, no, that's not right, maybe 110 years. And at least 80 years before the US code came into use in the very, very early 1930s or late 1920s. So they call it US 2060 and that's what they're gonna call it. Now we have some links down below and the first one to take a look at is going to be our cut sheet. Let's take a look. Here's the cut sheet that is linked down below. And this is gonna show references to swing clear hinges as well as the unit itself. Here's, and, and by the way, we are dealing with a full mortise swing clear hinge. There are uh, derivatives of swing clear hinges that would be, that happen to be listed here. You can do those in a, obviously a full mortise where each leaf is mortised to the edge of the door and then the rabbit of the frame. You can do it half mortise where the leaf that is uh, attached to the door is mortised and the other leaf is surface mounted. This would be called half surface because the leaf to the door is surface mounted and the other leaf is the opposite condition of that. Then we have full surface, swing clear. What unites all of these hinge types are simply the fact that it takes the vertical axis of pivoting and moves it over. It would otherwise be here. And the net result is exactly what we're trying to accomplish Sorry. If you take an imaginary line in your mind from the stop and run that down, you'll see that it doesn't encroach into the space. That's the point of the swing clear. If this was shown at 90 degree, this heel edge would be hanging into the space here. Now let's continue on through this document. Page two, um, it, I, you know, refers to full mortise swing clear hinges, gives you some part numbers, nothing there that I'd like to call your attention to. Uh, more information uh, on swing clear defines the four derivatives of swing clear. Full mortise, half mortise, ha uh, full surface, half surface. Olive knuckle hinges have nothing to do with this, but those are neat hinges. Palmel, they're also known as. Now we're gonna get into the cut sheet itself. This is our F248. 
and you will see that it is 130 thousandths, not 123 thousandths. And we have indeed corrected the uh, extr uh, d description of the item. We refresh that page, we'll see we've got 130 thousandths there. That's correct. Okay, now this tells us that this F248 is made in three and a half and four inch. The description we've gone over uh, at length, so I'll leave that to you to read further should you like. Um, they can do a concealed bearing version of a swing clear hinge, as seen here. This would be far more appropriate for a door with high volume use or with, um, and obviously a four inch um, tall hinge according to the chart that's here. Uh, the last page appears to be a duplicate of the first page. Now, our beveled square edge problem. The bottom line is available for full mortise application on square edge doors only. Therefore, they do not make a beveled edge version. If you require a swing clear hinge for a, hinge for a beveled edge, reach out to us. Don't buy this hinge. It's not going to work right. Let's get you the right hardware um, and be sure that we are in a good position for that because what's going to happen as you can imagine, as you can understand in your mind's eye, that bend here needs to have a relief to it that runs this way. So this leaf is going to have to be treated differently. That bend there. People can do it. Stanley just doesn't. Um, I'm surprised that they don't have it listed. Uh, and I imagine that if I contacted the factory, they could oblige. So if you want me to check on that, be uh, let me know. Now they do it on four and a half inch tall. You can see that they have a 248 and a 258 square edge and beveled edge doors. Okay, very important that 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 gets differentiated between. That is our cut sheet. Now we also have a link to tech drawing. This is just a template that shows the Stanley F248 in a four inch size. That bend there. They're assuming it's a residential application to get around your. Um, ranch style casing is what that's called. Other dimensional properties listed there as well. Should you need to check the location of the holes prior to ordering, you have all that data. A couple of other uh, documents here. Installation and template don't really apply to what we're working on. Hinge size, uh, same. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a document that, quite frankly, ought not be on this page. It doesn't really have much relevance. Now, speaking of relevance, there's a link here below this video to the manufacturer's page. And when you click on that, you can pull up not only all of the Stanley products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation as seen here, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. The full product catalog that I like to use on this page is this one here, the 2010 Architectural Hardware Catalog. This document, the format, uh, to my recollection, is unchanged since I first looked in a Stanley Hardware catalog in 1990. So I'm familiar with the book, is the bottom line. I would encourage that you review it, especially if a lot of the terms that we've quickly tossed around in this video are new to you, or you'd like to be more comfortable with your knowledge of hinges, the terminology used, how they function, and all the derivative types that are available. The Stanley catalog, the point being, is exceptional as an encyclopedic document. It's hinge, hinge theory 101 uh, is what it is. Anyone who deals with hinges and most definitely industry professionals that might be new, uh, this, in my opinion, ought to be required reading. Okay. Um, and I'll leave that path of discovery up to you. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. In conclusion, the name Stanley is quite synonymous with hinges. Um, as I said earlier, exceptional fit and finish. Standard hinges, unusual hinges, uh, somewhat like the um, full mortise swing clear that we have. When you order them, they may likely come in a box. They probably will. There happens to be two in this box. Inside the box, you're going to get this perforated cardboard. This is meant to be a shim, okay? Um, should you need to take that door, tip it somehow, cant it a little bit, change its, its position of rotation or its rest 
position in, in re uh, relationship to the frame itself, you can certainly do that as well. Um, they're sold as each, priced and sold per hinge, regardless of how many hinges are in a box. If you need an unusual number, if you need two, like this client needs two, uh, or if you need five, or if you need three, whatever the number is that you need, simply order that and that's what we'll ship. Any questions on the Stanley F248 4 inch and a US 2060 finish? And the other finish that they have listed, by the way, is satin brass. Satin brass and satin chrome. That doesn't mean they can't do other finishes, they just don't have them listed. If you're looking for oil rubbed, or if you're looking for polished brass, or polished bronze for that matter, reach out to us and we'll work with the factory to see if they can accommodate that. I imagine that they can. Or black, very common finish nowadays is black. Any questions on this or any other Stanley product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.